neither of you though i presume uh, instructed uh, these individuals to be as forthcoming and truthful as possible if anybody asked them about any of these questions or are you going to go so far as to say you encourage them to talk about your statement is anybody any of these individuals not anybody I'm that they would have about any of these individuals that we're talking about here today mr lindsay uh what i wanted them what i the information that i conveyed to mr hawkins or the northrop grumman leadership and to laura was that the individuals who needed to have information about this matter to solve the problem i had no problems with them communicating with it what but about the what if about if the independent council had asked about it or a congressional committee I, i've got no objection whatsoever if they had they were perfectly free and there was nothing at all that i could do if, if, or would if, do to stop if them we, from if communicating we believe that. you excuse me if we believe you that you, that you did not do any of these other things which I, the witnesses have said that you did the truth is is that i would not have had within my power or uh, stop them or had any means to stop them from communicating with whomever they wanted to communicate about the work that they had it was my desire that they communicate this information to those individuals who were necessary to solve the problem. It was my hope that they would respect that in the interests of the individuals who could possibly be harmed by sharing of this information and idle gossip. What idle gossip are we talking about? I didn't know we were talking about idle gossip. If someone were to say or to convey that, hey, your name showed up on this particular list, and this is what emails, this is what information was contained I really in don't emails. think that that's what we're talking about here at all. Uh, we're talking about something a little bit more systematic than, I, than, than idle gossip uh, here. Uh, what we're talking about here uh, is a serious problem with a computer system that appeared to technical individuals charged with responsibility for it uh, was missing perhaps a great deal of information. Uh, I don't think we're talking about idle gossip, and I, and I really don't think that that's what these individual, individuals came away from, that you simply told them not to engage in idle gossip. My testimony was and continues to be that I have no, have no, had no, will have no objection to them communicating to any individuals no, no, that and, are necessary to resolve the problem. I mean, forgive me if I say, you know, that, that's all fine to talk about that today, uh, but there is testimony under oath on the record that is quite contrary uh, to that. Uh, and uh, uh, the fact is, I mean, I know you all keep saying this, that simply because you had no legal authority to fire somebody or to terminate a contract, therefore, of course, you couldn't have even made such a statement. I mean, that's, that's just both. That's not the only reason, sir. I, I didn't say that that was the only reason. Uh, what I'm saying is both of you all have made those statements, and, and uh, they're, they're absolutely meaningless. People make threats all the time, even though they may not be in a legal position to carry out those threats or have the legal authority or power to do it. But uh, thankfully for federal prosecutors, that is not required uh, under the obstruction statute. You don't have to actually have the power to follow through on your threats or the legal authority to do so to be uh, to be guilty of obstruction. Sir, the and, and obstruction statutes wouldn't be the reason why I wouldn't do it. The, the, my my uh, moral code again, I, I would be the in, reason why I wouldn't like do it. Just like you can't get into the minds of the other witnesses, I can't get into your mind. So, I mean, certainly I, uh, that, that's, I hear what you're saying, and, and they're very self-serving statements, and they're delivered very eloquently and repetitively, and I understand that. But my concern, as a, uh, perhaps as a former prosecutor and somebody that uh, unfortunately had to spend a great deal of time over the last two years looking uh, at these uh, obstruction statutes uh, that uh, were faced with a situation very similar to some of the uh, uh, considerations we looked at in the, the fact situations we looked at in the Judiciary Committee, uh, where uh, there is pressure uh, brought to bear on people with information that is or might be relevant uh, to an investigation or an official proceeding. And it's not idle gossip, Mr. Lindsay. What we're talking about here are matters involving people of interest to the Office of Independent Counsel, to an impeachment proceeding of this House, and to the oversight responsibilities of this committee. These are very serious matters. Absolutely, uh, And sir. when we're faced with several witnesses who state under oath, both in court proceedings and before this body, uh, that there was pressure, that there were threats made, and we hear that from several different people, we're not going to disregard it just because you all come in here with very long pedigrees that, that you tell us about and expect us to think that just because 
you have all these degrees and have all these awards and some people came to your weddings that none of this ever happened uh, we we're gonna look at it a little more carefully than that I would hope I mean I I believe that there is more than that that supports what I'm saying and what Ms. Callahan is saying. I believe that the record is replete with examples of why the story that I'm saying is supported. First, these people and people at Northrop Grumman made the argument to me as to why this should be something that was arguing within the scope of the contract. What was within the scope of the contract? How would they know it wasn't within the scope of the contract if they didn't know what work was to be performed? They knew about it. My, my, I made my no concern, objection. My concern with obstruction of justice does not hinge on whether something was technically within the scope of the contract or not. Oh, I understand We're that. We're looking at the underlying database, the underlying information that by every uh, by every appearance was relevant to ongoing investigations of this Congress and the independent counsel. The time of the uh, gentleman from Georgia has expired. Um, Mr. A Mr. Waxman, uh, the ranking member, would like us to clarify for the record, and let me just say this, that we originally agreed to three 10-minute rounds and then go to five-minute rule. The minority has agreed to go to 10-minute uh, rounds instead of the five-minute rounds. Just a clarification for the record, and with that, for 10 minutes, I recognize the gentleman ca from California, Mr. Horn. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Callahan, uh, yes, sir. tell me, you were in the Office of Administration of the White House, is that correct? That's correct, the Office of Administration for the Executive Office of the President. Right, and uh, when did you join that office? September 30th of 1996. 96? Yes, and sir. And what were you paid? Excuse me? What was your pay scale? I was the GS-14. GS-14. Yes, Were you sir. on load from an agency? No, sir. There was a vacancy announcement that I competed for and was selected for. Did you have people that reported to you in that Office of Administration? Initially, sir, when I was the program manager for the Lotus Notes and Windows NT environment, the folks that I worked with were mainly contractors because that function was contracted out. Well, are these one or two people you had reporting to you? I'm, I'm trying to get the line, and uh, did you have a staff working for you? There was a mixed staff between federal and contractors, and the contractors that I, when I was initially hired on as the Lotus Notes Windows NT program manager, the bulk of the people were all contractors, and I worked through the contract supervisor. Now, these are different contracts than the one we've been talking about today. Yes, sir. The contract changed in 1997. Uh, in October of 1997, the previous contractor left and Northrop Grumman came on board in a very uh, tenuous and tumultuous contract turnover. It was very stressful. Well, uh, I'm sure it was. Uh, I've known young people in about seven presidencies, and uh, I'm amazed sometimes what happens to them. And it doesn't matter whether they're Democrats, Republicans, conservatives, liberals, doesn't matter. And, but they change. And they get into the White House atmosphere. First thing they do is pick up the phone and uh, call their mother, usually. And uh, they uh, start writing on White House stationery and all that. And uh, some who have been on the Hill suddenly are for the president as dictator down there. We're all idiots. So uh, I've been used to that. And I'm just curious uh, if it could be possible that someone on your staff used the word jail and whatever, if you sent them over there to scare the people or just make sure there wouldn't be any leaks. I can understand that if you don't want any leaks and somebody might have blurted out jail or whatever. And is that possible? Would anybody on your staff have done that? I can't attest to what staff members would say, sir. All I can do is tell you what I know and what I said as an individual, and I did not use the term jail. Well, did you ever send any of your staff over to talk to the people that have been before us on panel one this year? No, sir. I work directly with Betty Lambeth. Yeah, I can't hear you. It's very difficult. Would right. you put that closer? No, sir. I said I worked with Betty Lambeth directly. She was the leadership individual on the contractor side that was responsible for supporting the day-to-day -day activities per the contract in order to keep the email systems running. Was there anything when you talked to her that could have led her to say they threatened us with jail? 
if we spilled the beans on anything here? Nothing that I would have said to her, sir, no. Okay, so you can't think of any words. It's not unreasonable if you've been charged by the Office of Administration to say, get that contract moving, and why don't you go over there and tell them something. I can see that happening in any White House, so I'm just curious if that happened and you went over there because the heat was on you to get that contract moving. No, sir. The only heat that was on me was to find the scope and depth and breadth of the problem, and that was the heat that I reiterated to Betty Lambeth. It's the fact that we needed to find out, technically speaking, what was the problem and how to approach it and what did we need to do to fix it. And, and then after that, I left with my involvement on this particular project. Did anybody else act in your name in the next few weeks? Um, I would be up to my immediate supervisor, who is Kathy Gallant, uh, to address that issue. And did she ever meet with any of the people in the contract that uh, Northrop Drummond had? I don't have first-hand knowledge, but what I heard today was some references to Kathy Gallant, so I would assume there had been some discussion. Well, I just, uh, you obviously have a lot of talent or you wouldn't be down there in the Department of Labor, presumably, in charge of a technology center. But uh, I have seen strange behavior by Democrats and Republicans when they get in the aura of the White House. And uh, I just wonder, sometimes people are going to blow their stack at people and don't even think about it. They go back to the office and say, I guess I told them and maybe they'll do it or not do it, as the case may be. And that couldn't have happened to you when you were just sort of fed up with the contract administration? Um, no, sir, I, I don't blow my stack. In fact, um, in folks that know me and have worked with me, they have a, a joke on the back side of things in that they're waiting for the day when I do lose my temper because they've never seen that happen yet, and so they joke about that with me. Well, I think I'd probably agree with them that uh, I wouldn't want to be around you when you had one of those explosions. but. Uh, just wondering how you're feeling. So uh, let me move on, Ms. Callahan. Did you report the problem on that would come up with this computer contract at any time to any other White House employee? I reported the problem with the email anomaly to Mr. Lindsay. Um, I didn't deal with any issues involving the contract. That wasn't within the scope of my responsibilities, nor do I have that expertise. So it was uh, you initially reported to Mr. Lindsay then? Yes, sir. Uh, My immediate supervisor, Kathleen Gallant, was not there, and I do not recall why. Um, Paulette C. Sean would have been the next in the chain of command, and she was out of the office at the time when I went to look for someone to notify, and in which case I saw Mr. Lindsay in his office, and as the chief of staff, I notified him that we had another anomaly. How about did you report it to Ada Posey? No, sir. You did not. What was Ms. Posey's position? Uh, she was the director of the Office of Administration. And you didn't report to her? No, sir. Well, who in the hierarchy of the Office of Administration did you report to? I reported to Kathleen Gallant. And what was her title? She was the Associate Director for Information Systems and Technology in the Office of Administration. Now, did she report to Ada Posey? She reported to Paulette C. Sean. And uh, what was her title? I'm not sure of her exact title, so I wouldn't want to misrepresent it. How about uh, Virginia Apuzo? Uh, what was her position? Um, and Virginia Apuzo, to my understanding, was the special assistant to the president for management and administration. And uh, the chain of command, sir, would be, um, the way I understood it, was Miss Virginia Apuzo, Miss Ada Posey, and then uh, Paulette C. Sean, then Kathleen Gallant. And, of course, Mr. Lindsay, um, working with Ms. Posey as the, the chief of staff. Now, could it be possible that uh, when you gave them a report that, hey, this thing isn't working, that they sailed over there and said something to the staff? Uh, you would have to ask them, sir. I can't speak for them. Well, you're saying you don't have any knowledge that anybody above you in the hierarchy went saying, look, I'm tired of all this mess. And I can believe that. I've had a few computer things where they just don't tell you the truth. And so you get really wound up. So did any people above you say, look, we've had it with them. Let's go and tell them a few things. In my brief interaction with this situation, again, I was only involved for about the first week or two with the problem. I don't recall any of that occurring, but I can't say what happened after I was off of the project. 
When was the White House Counsel's Office first informed? I'm not sure, sir. That wasn't my in my job or my duty to inform them of anything. And, and was the uh, was the informant uh, in the counsel's office, Mr. Lindsay? Is that the one people reported to generally with this problem? I reported the problem to Mr. Lindsay, and then after that, I understand that Kathleen Glant and Paulette Cichon took over the management of the project. And I'm not sure what the reporting chain was that they established. Well, can you tell us uh, about everyone who was told about the problem? I mean, how many people were in on what was going on over there? Uh, the Lotus Notes team, which were all the contractors, uh, Mr. Lindsay, myself, um, Paulette Cichon, um, and I understand uh, Kathy Glant, too, as well, because when she came back from her absence, uh, she notified me that she was taking over the project. So uh, she, someone had briefed her by then. Uh, did you report the problem to Michelle Peterson on the White House Council staff? No, sir. I don't know Michelle Peterson. I just know of a name. So you did, you're saying that Mr. Lindsay was the only person in the Office of White House Counsel that had knowledge, at least from you? I wasn't in the office. I was general counsel for the Office of Administration, not in the Office see. of White House so Counsel. So you were in the Office of Administration? Correct, sir. Okay. Now, did you report to anybody, either one of you, in the uh, counsel to the President's office? Did I tell them about the problem? Right. Absolutely. Okay. Did you ever do that, Ms. Callahan? No, sir. I informed Mr. Lindsay. Did anyone else, to your knowledge, in the White House Counsel's Office, who did you brief there? Uh, I was directed by the assistant to the President from Management Administration to talk to Charles Ruff, and I did. The Counsel. The Counsel. Yeah. That gentleman's time has expired. If you have further questions, we'll get back to you. Mr. LaTourette. Yeah. Is it Mr. LaTourette or Mr. Micah? Micah. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Micah? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Lindsay, you said it, it was your job to um, see that searches requested by the White House Council were conducted. Is that correct? No. The searches by the White House Council were the language and the definitions went directly from the White House Council's office to a member of the White House staff who performed the search. It did not go through me. Well, what did you do? You said you were primarily a conduit. Uh, you never conducted any searches. What were you, you a con what was your role? Oh, I was the general counsel. We had uh, we performed services which range from procurement. The, the but you're saying you, you never conducted any searches. I was only involved in one search, which, only one in, in the entire that time. One? That was the one where folks in the council's office gave me four names, which I conveyed to folks in the technic, my technical folks who performed the search. That is the only but you, search. And other than that, you were not interested in any information that had been obtained, right? You, the, you were just, your job was to see that things were executed in an administrative fashion. Uh, the Making sure the systems work, et cetera. Otherwise, why would Mrs. Mrs. Callahan tell you that things weren't working? Right. I mean, that it was, was your role. Right. Exactly. To maintain the now, systems Mrs. and to Callahan provide advice and guidance. Testified earlier that she came and told you that there was a technical problem, right? Yes, sir. Did she also tell you that uh, people were that that someone had uncovered some information? Uh, regarding to uh, relating to Miss Lewinsky or some matters, uh, I have a recollection of that. He did tell you when you conveyed your information to Mr. Ruff. Did you tell him that uh, there was just a technical problem, or did you tell him that there was also information relating to this this matter or any other matter under investigation? Uh, being uh, disclosed that it was uh, uh, uncovered and discussed, being discussed. I was not in a position to tell the counsel to the president what matters were under investigation. Uh, and which I'm not ones asking were. you that. What I, she told us earlier, she told us earlier 
that Mr. Haas was out in the hall and there were people out in the halls discussing uh, some of this. And Mr. Haas was like a little, uh, I think she used an analogy of a child getting a Christmas present. He'd found information and there were things uh, being disclosed. Now, you told me you're, you're, you were primarily technical and, uh, and administrative, and she was telling you that the system was broken, there was something wrong. Not technical. I, I wasn't, a, I'm not a technical person. She told person. you that there was a, a, a something wrong, right? Correct, sir. Okay. And she also told you that they were talking about some of the information they found. That is okay. correct, sir. And I asked you, did you tell both, did you tell Mr. Ruff there was a technical problem or did you tell him, convey some of the information that she gave you on up? I know that I conveyed to Ruff that there was a technical problem. And beyond that, tell me, because I'll ask Mr. Ruff this question under oath. You told him some of the other information, too? I may have or may I, not have. I don't have don't a recall? recollection. I don't recall. Oh, okay. And you don't recall... Uh, let, let me let me get to Miss Callahan a second here. Tell me how you conveyed to to those folks. Uh, you said you advised employees of the need to maintain confidentiality. I could go back and get the exact record. You, was was that what you did? It, sir, I advised them that they needed to focus on the technical problem and because they, there was... What did you say anything about confi confidentiality? I told them we had a sensitive situation and we needed to work on figuring out the problem and that we shouldn't be just... Now, part three of them <clears throat> thought they were threatened or that you mentioned going to jail. Uh, it's in some degrees. All of them who testified said that they were told not to tell their spouses... Mm -hmm. Uh, or uh, talk about it outside. Tell me how, tell the committee what you told those people. Okay, to the best of my recollection and understanding, I told them that there had been some discussion going on in the hallways. Uh, again, the fact that Mr. Haas had raised the issue about email dealing with Monica Lewinsky and Ashley Rains was unusual because we had not asked for that information and, and at this point in time. And being that there was some information being discussed in the hallways very loosely, knowing the situation that was going on, we were obviously not putting our attention on the technical issues to figure out what the problem was. So with that understanding, I advised them that they needed to focus on the technical issues. That they shouldn't even tell their spouses about this. And that, well, I told them if anyone had any questions, refer them to myself or Mr. Thing about their spouses are all five of them not telling us uh, or telling us that that... They all heard part of this. You don't recall that? I don't recall addressing their spouses, sir. Um, you, you recall the conversation, though, uh, passing on the information about Mr. Haas to Mr. Lindsay, what was going on in the hallways? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, do, do you remember getting Mr. Lindsay on the telephone to reiterate what you had said as far as your need to maintain confidentiality? Did that occur or did that not occur? No, so I do recall getting Mr. Lindsay on the phone. And he Mr. Lindsay, you don't recall that conversation at all? No, I don't. It very well might have happened if Laura said that. They the all remember the conversation, and they remember it as a reinforcement to the warning they'd had from you about confidentiality. Why did you, uh, why did you institute that uh, need to bring Mr. Lindsay into this? Well, sir, first of all, it was brought to my attention by Betty Lambeth that she was having difficulty with her own employee being able to focus on the effort because he was in the hallway talking about it. But, and you had told and him about this, and he knew that there were people talking about what they'd found, and then you got him on the phone to help keep them quiet. Is that correct? I got Mr. Mr. Lindsay actually wanted to be on the phone call to reiterate the standard practice and focus on oh, the technical so issue. Oh, so he volunteered to you to be on the phone uh, after you told him what was going on? Yes, sir. You didn't did. ask him? No, sir. You don't, do you recall Mr. Lindsay uh, asking to be on the phone so you could My tell? My previous testimony is that I didn't remember the conversation. They all, everyone testified today that they were told to keep a lid on this. And they remember the conversation with you very well. And now she's telling us that you asked for that uh, conversation. 
But you don't recall that conversation? I may have asked for that conversation. I have no recollection of asking for the conversation. And if I did, I don't, I, you have to understand, sir, I didn't know these people, particularly at this particular time. The concept of me discussing with these people or making threats to people uh, who I did not know. You've already told us you were only in, interested in gaining the technical things correction, but now we find out that, in fact, you knew, and, and we heard uh, this uh, Mrs., Mrs. Callahan tell us today that they had, that uh, they were talking about information relating to what, did you say, Reigns and Monica? What did you say, what, who did you say? The two individuals were Monica Lewinsky and Ashley Reigns. Okay. That was brought to my attention by Betty Lambeth. And you don't remember how specific you were with conveying this information to those above you, like Mr. Ruff. Is that right, Mr. Lindsay? I remember being very specific about the technical problem and the fact that incoming email was probably not being arms managed. I remember being very specific about that. The record shows that that was where the emphasis of any conversation I may have had. Mrs. Callahan, there, it appears this morning they testified that there may be tens of thousands of emails that we've never seen. Is that a good estimate? I don't know, sir. I, I did not see in that quantity. You did not? Uh, the, the system was broken, it wasn't fixed, we weren't able to retrie retrieve that information. Uh, it also sounds like uh, uh, Mrs. Lambeth was, uh, was removed from her position and she claims that there was a slowdown uh, uh, and, and uh, basically a, uh, trying an effort to try to stop all of this. Did you see any of that? I was only involved in the very, very beginning for a short period of time. I didn't see that during my brief involvement, and I cannot say what happened after I was off the project. I still have time, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you have 25 seconds. So it appears, Ms. Callahan, that you were in concerned about more than just a technical problem. You were concerned about leaks uh, of information, people talking in the hall and people conversing about what they had found. Is that correct? No, sir. I was concerned about them putting their time and effort and energy into fixing the problem and not talking about what if and would have, could have, should have type discussions in the hallway. And that's but why- But you I'm did mention both the technical problem and the leaks to Mr. Lindsay. Is that correct? I advised Mr. Lindsay of the technical problem and the two names that were involved in what Mr. Hawes disclosed to Ms. Thank Lambert. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <sighs> Mr. LaTourette, it's nice to have you back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I want to apologize to the panel. I was off doing something else and I didn't hear your testimony, but uh, I've had the chance to review it with my staff. And I, I want to begin by saying something nice about you, Mr. Lindsay, and disclose to my colleagues that um, Mr. Lindsay uh, this week called me and, and offered to come into my office and did come into my office and spend an hour with me and answered any question that I might uh, have and I appreciate that and I, I think that that occurred as a result of his former association with Congressman Lewis Stokes uh, for whom I have the greatest admiration as, and was proud to serve with Congressman Stokes before his retirement. Uh, that being said, uh, and so I thank you for that courtesy, um, but, but that being said, when I practice law we used to have an expression that, that you could have five people say the same accident and you, you, nobody would remember it exactly the same, but, but likewise, you would be hard pressed to find somebody that said that there wasn't an accident. Uh, you know, so someone may say the car was blue and one may say, you know, but, uh, and I did sit through the first panel and I, and I have to tell you that, that we had that kind of situation with the first panel where everybody's recollection may have been slightly different, but everybody saw an accident. Uh, and I was, you know, and, and if we go in, in degrees of things, Ms. Ms. Lambeth was pretty strident in her observations and, and her recollections. Um, Mr. Haas uh, even made the comment, and I think when Mr. Waxman was, was questioning him, he, he said that in, in your presence, and, and congratulations on your marriage, I understand you, you married a Secret Service agent, and I congratulate you on that, because I would have called you Miss Crabtree if I hadn't known that. Um, but that uh, he was flippant, and, and that's how this, there's a jail cell with your name on it thing came about. He sort of made a joke about it. And, and so, so it wasn't just, you know, people coming in hammering, saying jail cell, jail cell, we felt threatened. And then Ms. Golas, I mean, she, she didn't look like a troublemaker to me. And so I, I hope you, you 
realize, and I'm not going to beat this drum again, but, but the testimony that you present, the, the two of you, is in, in stark and direct contrast with, with five or six people that we had in here earlier. And, and it, it's, it's troubling to me, and I know from the questions you've received from, from my colleagues, it's, it's at least uh, troubling to them. But I, so I'm not going to focus on that. I, I do want to talk about a couple things that, that came up in our conversation, uh, Mr. Lindsay, and, and maybe you can uh, uh, sort of expound on them and, and, and tell us what it is that you think. But um, my understanding is that uh, you still have not uh, entered into a contract to reconstruct the, uh, the data from the mail server, too. So that you're, you're taking bids on that now, is that right? That's correct, sir. Uh, and uh, again, and, and I, I made notes, but you can correct me if I'm wrong, that, that one estimate that you received was that this would cost between 2 and $3 million, and it would take about 211 days to, to, to fix, do the reconstruction of these emails that we still have nobody seen. That's correct, sir. Okay. And I, I think I mentioned to you at the time that the suspicious among us, and, and there are some suspicious people in Congress, yes, I try not to be one, but I get more suspicious as time goes by, yes, sir. That, that if I pulled out a calendar and added up 211 days, 211 days from letting a contract would coincide rather nicely with the election wherein we elect either Vice President Gore or Governor Bush to be the next President of the United States. And are you troubled by that at all? In other words, two and a half years has gone by, and now you may be entering into a contract that's going to take us past the election, so these things will remain sealed more. Yes, sir. I would like to have those email. If I could have the emails reconstructed within a shorter period of time, and take my word for it, that those estimates that we have are not the end of the story. We are continuing and will continue to try and find something that can put this resolve this issue quicker and I believe that uh, there are, I've certainly gone back and after our conversation I went back and talked to our folks and said uh, isn't there any way we can do any better and I think that our folks are going to apply their best analysis or best, me best methodologies to try and find somebody who can do this work faster, because I think that's the quickest way to get this issue resolved. I, I hope so. And I, I think that, that also, I, I want to talk about the decision to not reconstruct this mail to server. You know, the, the other panel said you stop the bleeding and, and no longer emails coming into the, the White House not captured on the ARM system, but we still have this body of stuff while there was a problem. Yes, sir. And, and obviously somebody made a decision to, to not reconstruct this mail to server. Uh, and again, relying on my memory of our conversation, you indicated that you attended a cabinet meeting wherein the President the vice president were, were there, and there was a discussion about Y2K compliance. And, and if I remember your exact words to me, as the vice president very clearly said that the White House is not going to be the poster child for Y2K noncompliance. Do, do, you, do you remember that meeting and that indicating that to me? I, 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 it actually was information that was provided to me by the assistant of the president for management administration in the cabinet meeting, I believe, that, that she attended, okay. and that the importance of making sure and her looking to me to make sure that we weren't the ones that failed in our Y2K effort. Gotcha. And Correct, sir. So as a result, and again, I, if I've, you've been asked this already, a decision was made to concentrate on Y2K and things like reconstructing the mail to server were sort of fell by the wayside. Is that right? Uh, that amongst many, many other projects. But was that decision yours and your position at, at the OA? Did, did you make the decision to not reconstruct the mail to server until you became Y2 compliant and these other things were taken care of? In November of 1998, I was the chief of staff and general counsel. I wasn't, I wasn't the director, and I wasn't the assistant to the president for management administration at that time, so I couldn't make that decision unilaterally. Did you discuss the fact that you had five or six projects out there pending, and one of them was the reconstruction of the mail to server with, yes. with a superior? A absolutely, and I, and I will say this, that it was my recommendation, based on the technical review that my staff provided to me, that the mission critical systems for which our email system was one was our number one priority for Y2K reconstruction. So that certainly was something I conveyed to the director of the office of administration and to the assistant to the president for management administration. So that and, and was who, my recommendation. Who, who, was, who was the director? Uh, Ada Posey. Okay. And, and uh, there was an acquiescence by Ms. Posey that that the reconstruction of this server could wait until you did other things? I, I don't remember it being necessarily an acquiescence. I think that there, and I don't remember, it, it, keep in mind, it wasn't a discussion about this particular matter. It was a discussion about a whole list of mission cr critical projects which we were, we had to provide to Congress and to other people as to what our priorities were and in our budget discussions. So it was a matter of looking at this 
stack of information and then the other stack of information and placing the priority on the mission critical systems and those mission support systems which were more critical than, than others. Gotcha. I got gotcha. you. Now, the fact that, that this body of emails is not loaded into the ARM system makes the, the executive office of the president non-compliant with certain federal rules and regulations and laws, does it not? Uh, not to my knowledge. Well, it, it isn't it required by the Federal Records Act that these documents be loaded into a retrievable, electronically uh, automatic retrievable system? It was the, our analysis at the time is that the fact that we maintain the records, matter of fact, on the desktops where they were on the server, and the fact that we maintain the information on backup tapes meant that we were preserving the information in compliance with the Federal Records Act. Okay, but, but the fact of the matter is that, that uh, although they, if I understood Mr. Berry when he was here before, although on the hard drives, for instance, take this Lewinsky email that began some of this nonsense, that, that there was a, a couple responses, you know, uh, that whoever her friend was, Reigns or whoever the friend was, that you could see t one side of a conversation, but you yes. couldn't see Lewinsky writing into the White House, if I understood that right. So, so you couldn't reconstruct this information just by looking at the hard drives because the stuff that wasn't being captured uh, wasn't on the hard drives because he would have he that's where he would have been looking, is it not? Well, the, all, what that information meant is that it was an arms managed, so the information wasn't on the arms system. That does not mean that those emails were not on people's computer systems. Okay. Well, let, let me. I, I want to shift gears because ten minutes goes awfully quickly in this thing, and I want to talk about the yes, office sir. of the vice president. We, yes, we've been talking about this particular problem and the fact that uh, incoming emails weren't captured on this mail two server. Uh, are you aware today in your position that the office of the vice president continues to have a similar problem? I am aware of the fact that there are problems, but this is something that I've just most recently been apprised of. But, but specifically, let me just read you the, what I think is, is going on, and, and you can tell me whether you know about it or not. Yes, sir. And, and that is that the office of the vice president set up their own system uh, when they, I assume, took office or, or whatever. Maybe the, maybe the vice president invented his own system based upon, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, um, that, that there was no capturing of emails into the office of the vice president under the system that they under in an arm system under the the program that the office of the vice president established do you know that to be so I, I have been told that 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 there are some emails from the vice president's office which have not been captured by arms and, and specifically in 1997 they they went onto this lotus note program that we've been talking about all day uh, but still the program the email accounts that existed before 1997, principally the vice president's account and 27 other accounts, you, the ARM system is still not capturing emails from outside the White House into the office of the vice president. Do you know that to be so? I, I do not know that to be so. That It may be true, but I just don't know. I don't have any knowledge. Is, is that something that your office would have responsibility, you and, and, and Mrs. Callahan would have responsibility and and then looking into overseeing and correcting as you did with the mail to server problem? A absolutely. I, I've, I've felt a little bit handicapped because of the this ongoing investigation, I've been very, very careful about my communications with our technical staff to make sure that there was no even appearance of impropriety in terms of me making any appropriate communications with them. So frankly, I have not been the one looking into this matter and have not questioned our technical staff on the details of this matter. As Mr. LaTourette, the... if I may please? Oh, sure. Just to clarify, sir, since you uh, weren't here earlier, I left the executive office of the president back in October of 98, so I'm no longer there or have any ability to... Okay. to offer anything in that regard. But I, I, I thank you. And I, I, if I could just ask one more question, then I promise I'll be quiet. I, I just, this, this problem with the office of the vice president looks exactly like the, the problem with the mail to server. Uh, and, and I would hope that uh, the OA, the EOP, or whoever is going to take care of this. I, I happen to have a different conclusion, and I think that the Federal Records Act and Armstrong versus uh, the EOP require the maintenance of these systems uh, in sir. an arm. And, and I would hope that you'd fix it uh, so that, you know, if, if these things are smoking pistols, we'll let the evidence be out. And if they're not, and there's nothing there, we'll let that be out. But, but to have this cloud hanging over this thing on this body of 100,000, a million emails uh, at a time when this Congress is very interested in, in what's going on at the Executive Office of the President, I, I think doesn't do the American people a service, and it, I think it's a slap in the face of the Congress. So I hope you do your best. Thank you. Mr. Absolutely, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lotzred. Uh, Mr. Haas said during his testimony when we asked him, in fact, I asked this question, does any email actually reside on the PCs of the White House users, or does it all actually reside on the servers? And he said 98% 
is on the servers. Yes, sir. Well, I think the point that you were trying to make is that all this was on the hard drives of the... No, sir. That's not It was correct. on the servers. That, no. That's where, where it was. It, right. But when I go to my office right now and look at the email, and I have the very first email that I received when I came here, worked, started working for the White House, for the Office of Administration, I can go on my computer, though I've had several computers change place, it's all resides on the server. The server is different than the ARMS records management system, as it's been explained to me. I understand, but it was, it was, I thought I thought I understood you to say that this was on the personal computers of the individuals. No, no that's not what it, I was right. saying. Mr. Barr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I understand, uh, I think both of you have talked about, and I don't want to attribute this quote to both of you, but I think one of you used the quote, uh, trying to find out the scope and breadth of the problem. Uh, does it, it must bother you tremendously, tremendously that not only have you all discovered the scope, not discovered the scope and breadth of the problem, but the, I mean, you, you all haven't fixed it. Is, doesn't that, don't you find that particularly frustrating, Mr. Lindsay? Absolutely. You're in charge of this office, aren't you? Absolutely. I mean, I, wa I wasn't at that particular time, we've, we've, but at one point I was. We find that frustrating. Uh, you have tremendous credentials, and you spend a great deal of time telling us about them. Uh, you're in charge of this office. Here we are two, hour, two, two uh, years later, uh, and the problem hasn't been solved. Uh, what are you doing? I mean, why, why can't you get a handle on this? And I, don't, I, don't, I really don't think it's, it's just a matter of money. No, it isn't a matter of money. Uh, and it is a matter of law also, is it not? I mean, you all have a legal obligation to get to the bottom of this, don't you? I, I don't know about that. I have a personal obligation or feel very strongly, and I agree with you, that I would have preferred that this were resolved sooner. I would like it to be resolved as quickly as possible. But if the, to put it into context, if we had had systems failures as a result of Y2K and we hadn't done our work on that because we were doing a reconstruction, uh, that, then uh, it would there, have been there, a much there, more there you, serious there you problem. There you go again. You, you, you blame it on Y2K. You blame it on too many uh, burdens being placed on you all from, from all these congressional hearings and committees. Uh, you blamed it on major infrastructure problems. Uh, I mean, I really think you do yourself a disservice by coming up here and, and you know, blaming this. You all have, you all have, there is a serious problem here that has been known to your office for over two years a serious problem that, that at least some of us on this committee believes is a legal problem as well. Indeed. Uh, very possibly a criminal problem. And nothing's been done on it. I, well, let me, I beg to differ. One of the things that happened, I think it's very, very important to note, that in October of 1998, I received a proposal for $600,000 from Northrop Grumman to assess the nature of this problem and how we were to work to resolve it. I am very happy to report that today, the work that that work would have completed has been completed by government career staff who work in the office administration and have done that work so that we can go to bid and contract. The first step in resolving the problem was to fix the glitch in the first instance. Without that, at least as I was informed by my technical staff, you could not, could not do reconstruction. Then the next step in the process was the, to the inf the identify the, what... The, the information is there. The emails are there somewhere, aren't they? I, I really would not be able to go into great detail as to the technical elements of how it works. I can report to you but what your trusted job. technical staff this has is reported to me. That I is mean, correct. Aren't, aren't they, they, I mean, the others testified. I mean, you can retrieve these things. They're there. You're saying it's a matter of money to get them. But there was, there was one instance that I think Mr. Haas testified to that uh, a whole group of uh, documents were presented to you. I mean, where are those documents? Uh, they were presented to the council's office, but let me reinforce. No, no, this no, was no, 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 don't just, please, don't just, you, you talk Certainly. very fast, but slow down just a second, please. Certainly. The testimony earlier was that they were presented to you, not that to is, the council's office. To they you. were presented to me, and then I transmitted them to the council's office. But where are they? I couldn't tell you. Well, now, see, this, this is another problem. Uh, these documents are presented to you. You know very well. 
you're trained in the law and certainly you have you know what's going on in the world around you at that certainly at the time in 1998 also yes sir uh, these are very sensitive documents they're very relevant to the office of independent counsel investigation perhaps perhaps very relevant to an impeachment proceeding perhaps very relevant to chairman burton and our work on this committee yes sir uh, they come into you uh, you don't know where did you look at them no, I did not look at them. Okay. I conveyed did you them. Give, did you give them to Mr. Ruff? I, I, I don't remember. I remember taking it over to the West Wing to the council's office. I can't remember if I gave it specifically to him, but I, they I were certainly I, transmitted. You, you know who Mr. Ruff is? Absolutely, sir. Okay. Uh, and you don't recall whether you gave them to Mr. Ruff? I remember taking them to the council's you office myself. What's that? Well, well, if you remember taking them over to the, general, to the White House council's office yourself, I don't believe that you don't know who you gave them to. I, I you, can't you, help that. You, you, All I can testify, sir, is to those and, matters for I mean, which I have personal sensitive, knowledge. Sensitive documents. Yes. Very important documents. And I believe that transmitting them over that, there and you don't remember who you gave them to? Transmitting those sensitive documents to the council's office of people whom I have the a very significant degree of respect and admiration for is certainly an I'm appropriate sure it's very, step. I'm sure it's very mutual. But the fact of the matter is, I don't think that somebody trained, as you have told us you are and as you undoubtedly are in the law and how to deal with sensitive documents, uh, would just take them over there and say, hey, I trust everybody in this office, so here they are, guys, and just walk away. I think well, you know exactly who you gave them to. All I'm asking is, who did you give those documents to? I, I, I can't testify to facts which are not in my recollection, <laughs> sir. Cannot testify to facts that are not within your recollection. I think that's a new one. Did you have any other discussions about any of this with Mr. Ruff, the White House counsel? I don't have, I had conversations with the counsel on various topics at various times. This topic, I'm certain, was one of them. I don't have any specific recollection of other conversations with the counsel's office about other details of this particular matter particularly after the transmittal of those particular documents, other than... What you do, just put it out of your mind? You've told us that this is something very important. Absolutely. But there are two issues, sir. Absolutely what? Do you put it out of your mind? It's, or that it's, it's absolutely important? It is important, but it's important for two reasons. The first reason is that your committee was due information, and I recognize that and respect that. But the determination as Probably the Office of Independent Counsel was And the Office as well. of Independent Counsel and what and the other, Judiciary Committee Absolutely, as well. sir. Absolutely. But none of them got these documents. I, I would not know, sir. You, you would not know? Did you give them to them? No, I did not. Okay. There's a memo here, dated June 9th, 1998, that has been the subject of some discussion today. For John Podesta from Virginia Apuzo. I think it was the 19th, uh, sir. Pardon? I think it was the 19th. Yeah, June 19th, 1998. Uh, exhibit WH 1.3. Yes, sir. Uh, did you get a copy of that? I reviewed it before it was transmitted to Ms. Apuzo. Okay. Uh, but it, it doesn't show on here that it went through you. You just reviewed no, it? No, it does not. Okay. Did you get a copy of it after the fact? Uh, I don't have a recollection of getting a copy of it after the fact, no. I think I, my testimony earlier was that uh, before this, before actually conducting a search, I had forgotten about that memo. I didn't have a re specific recollection of it at all uh, until we actually looked through the files in the Office of Management and Administration to find it. You've re you found one of those specific things that you didn't have a recollection of. So that is correct, possible. sir. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, this document, put up page two, please. It ends with the, uh, the sentence, I will keep you informed of our progress. Is that the end of the document? The rest of it is blank. It doesn't even have a page number or anything? It uh, doesn't show CCs or anything? Uh, if, if I think the document speaks for itself. No, I'm asking, uh, is that is that the end of the document as you remember it? Was there anything else on there that... It is the end of the document as I remember it. Okay. So it would not be a standard procedure uh, for a White House memo to have pagination, uh, just to make sure that, uh, you know, all pages are with a document or that certain pages belong to them? Um, I, I wouldn't be able to... I, sometimes I've seen it and sometimes I haven't. Really? Yes, sir. Now, there's another document here uh, that 
we talked about earlier today white house three and and one of your colleagues mr long i think it was had no idea what it was do you have any idea what this is these are talking points dated march seventh of two thousand yes sir q and a do you know what that document is no i didn't strike a chord with me sir mm-hmm does looking at it do you have any earthly idea i mean have you ever seen a talking points document before have i ever seen a talking point stocking before yes sir okay but this one rings no bell whatsoever you you have no idea who drafted this what it was drafted for who no i don't know sir what conversations uh did you have with mr podesta about I, these matters i let him know about the information that was contained in the memorandum and that was the conclude he asked one question is what that's the memorandum of june 19th that's it and that was the sum and substance of all communications that i had with him about this particular matter the the, the gentleman's time has expired but uh, i'm I'll, i'm taking my final time if the gentleman needs some of that i'll be happy to yield it to him I, I'd just appreciate to, that. i just have a couple of questions here yes sir uh, mr hawkins testified that he raised the issue of threats with you, Mr. Lindsay. Um, uh, did he? No, he did not. He said he did. He certainly did not. So that's another lie by those folks. Did Mr. Hawkins... Well, that's... No, wait a minute. Mr. Oh, Hawkins... And I was only involved for a short period of time, so I don't know what happened after I left the project. Mr. Lindsay, did, uh, did anyone ever discuss with you or raise the issue of the efforts to solve the problem not moving fast enough? Excuse me, sir. So did anyone ever discuss with you or raise the issue of the efforts to solve the problem not moving fast enough? I certainly discussed it, and I certainly raised that issue with individuals. Did anyone raise it with you? I don't have a recollection of people raising that to me. I have a recollection of me raising it and wanting to have things well, done who, faster. Who raised it with you? Do you don't recall anybody raising it with you about the process not moving, about maybe them being frustrated with it? And no. But nobody, the, to your recollection, raised the issue of the whole process not moving fast enough and being frustrated about not moving fast enough. Not that I recollect. I was frustrated enough, sir. The documents that you took to the council's office that uh, Mr. Barr referred to talked about Ms. Lewinsky. Now, the search was not a complete search of information asked for by the independent council, was it? It was just a partial search. I, I wouldn't be able to answer that question, sir. Well, it only referred to two people that Ms. Lewinsky may have uh, uh, sent emails to. I would have to refresh my okay. recollection as to what the independent counsel's request was. Well, when you found out, when you found out there was information, you know, and you took it to the counsel's office, you had to know that that was only partial, didn't you? Did you think that was all the emails that Ms. Lewinsky sent into the White House? I had no idea, sir. Well, did you ever go back and ask for a complete search of Ms. Lewinsky's uh, emails? I would not ask for a search of any employee or former employee's emails, particularly someone who'd worked for the White House office, without consultation with the counsel's well, office. But, 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 but the, the independent counsel had asked for any information relevant to that. We had asked for information on a whole host of issues and, and had subpoenaed them. The, the independent counsel had subpoenaed that information. As I said, sir, I would not have conducted an on my own search of records of that nature without consultation with the council's office. But did you or anyone to your knowledge ever tell the independent council that that was only a partial partial search of the Lewinsky emails? Uh, I didn't, and I, haven't, I wouldn't have knowledge of any communications. I'm not aware of any communication in between the White House counsel's office and the independent counsel, not a single one. No, wait, Mr. Chairman, no, wait. Can I? Uh, yes, sir, I'll yield to the gentleman. Time. Now, wait a minute. You, you knew it was just a partial search. I mean, there, there were outstanding subpoenas from both the Office of Independent Counsel and this committee. I don't know if there were at that particular time by the Judiciary Committee. But you knew that that was, that, that, was, uh, that by virtue of the information brought to your attention in this memo 
Yes, sir. And in your other conversations, yes, sir. Quite aside from threats and so forth, let's put that aside. Yes, sir. You knew that there was a serious problem, and you knew that there was a high likelihood that information that was under subpoena by the independent counsel and by at least one committee of the Congress was very likely incomplete. I did not know that, sir. Yes, you, you, you couldn't have helped but have known it because of the nature of this specific problem brought to your attention because of these gaps. Sir, in this my system staff, because, of the, because of the mail to problem. My staff has been unable to this day to tell me the exact number of emails that weren't included. They've been unable to. You don't have to know to the exact number of emails included. There you go again. See, talking about, you know, something very precise. We're asking a general concern here and a general matter relating to a very specific problem. Okay? Yes, sir. Now, there was testimony earlier today that Mr. Barry was able to go back after it became apparent to him, and he isn't even at your, near your level. He doesn't have all of these degrees and so forth, I don't think, that, that, that you told us about. He was able to pinpoint just one that came to his attention, and he was able to direct the people to go back, and they uncovered it, they found it, because he knew that there was something incomplete in a record. The council's office- Or in a, or in a series of records. The council's Later, office- Later, Mr. Haas testified and you've testified that a whole group of documents were brought to your attention that you now have us believe you said see no evil hear no evil speak no evil you just closed your eyes to it dropped it off somewhere over at the white house no i didn't drop you it off you knew that you, you sir you, i did not drop it off somewhere i dropped it off with in the council's office of the president of the united states and, and that's you, not and just and somewhere you and you have and you would have us believe that you have no specific recollection of who i don't well i know you've told us that but you had to have known. There is no way that you could not have known that At these records that were under subpoena, this was not some, some, some secret investigation, that they were not complete because of this specific problem, and you took no steps to uncover that. I think you had the duty as an officer of the court, quite aside from the laws that I think apply here, to do that. I, I believe that I fulfilled that's why you're my frustrated. obligations under my oath and as an officer of the court to convey the, in the information and the nature of the problem to the counsel's office. The review of those documents, to review them for responsiveness and to review them for privilege and other things that re lawyers routinely do with the production of documents was the responsibility of the counsel's office of the President of the United States. If you, if that you were, responsibility. If you, were, if you were so frustrated, as you've told us, and I think that's the word you just used with the chairman, uh, what's, tell, tell us some of the specific steps you took to relieve your frustration. Because we have a whole sheaf of documents here expressing continued frustration by Mr. Barry, for example. Document after document after document. I can give you specific instances. I can give you specific instances of, of how I expressed my frustration. I had a contractor that wanted additional resources who believed that the very issue that you're talking about was outside of the scope of the contract. The very definition of that issue, the way that they were doing it, meant delay, sir. Mr. Mr. Barry, again, I go back to this because there are people far less qualified than you. Mr. Mr. Barry, Barry is very qualified. Mr. Barry discovered that there was, in just one series of emails, that there were gaps. He was able to check that out and get an answer to it very quickly. Mr. Haas, it took him a little bit more time because he was requested, uh, pursuant to a chain of command here, to gather more documents than just the one particular missing email that Mr. Mr. Barry was looking for. But, sir, Mr. Haas was able to do so. You're sitting here telling us today that, that you, as the head of this entire office, at the time I was a general counsel, background, uh, in this, uh, haven't been able to do it. What I'm saying, sir, is that as I recollect Mr. Barry's testimony, it was that he discovered a gap in those particular emails. But remember, sir, that information was coming from the ARM system alone. That was not the only source of documentary evidence that was provided to investigative committees Fine, but at least you knew or that. to other organizations. What I'm saying is, is I'm just extrapolating. I'm saying if he discovered that yes, sir. in January of 1998, just based on a very quick review of a couple of emails, he noticed there was a gap that didn't make any sense. Yes, sir. He got onto it right away and discovered the problem, alerted your office in January of 1998. He did not notify my office in January of Yes, he of did notify your office. Now, I don't know whether you're 
calling him a liar or not, but he testified that he sent a memo, a, a, an incident report. To his supervisor. To the office, to OA. What is OA? The Office of Administration is okay, a federal I'm agency. I'm saying that's your office. Now, he didn't send it to the Office of Administration in Alaska or somewhere. It was your office. Well, using your that office analogy, him having knowledge is notification to the Office of Administration because he's no, part of the Office of Administration. A piece of paper was sent, and there was follow-up done, and you all did nothing. That's our, that's our frustration, and you haven't done anything today to relieve that. That's not correct, sir. You're getting inside my mind now? I'm telling you you haven't. What I'm saying is we did $600,000 worth of work by government, dedicated government employees. I will not discount the work that those people did during a period where they were addressing the Y2K problem and other types of other pressing issues. Those people did that work. They actually completed it, and they did it at a cost that you saved did. the taxpayers' money. You did not. This is your responsibility. You have not done it. You, you are correct, sir. I have not completed the today. reconstruction. That is correct. You haven't correct. done anything. That is not correct, sir. My time's expired. Uh, Mr. Waxman, you have a closing question or two? Uh, yes, I do, Mr. Chairman. I, I must say people have different recollections of events, and I have a lot of sympathy for the witnesses. They're being asked to rec recollect, to tell us about detailed activities. I, don't know, I guess this was two years ago, isn't that yes, right? Yes, sir. And uh, I don't know if I could have the recollection of events two years ago, who said what to whom. I could have a general idea. And when people have different testimony, it doesn't mean that one person's lying and another person's not. People just talk themselves into um, what they remember. It doesn't mean that it was true. They talk themselves into thinking that must be what happened. Now. Um, that's a situation where people are talking about, excuse me, uh, that's a situation where we're talking about events of many years ago. Sir. Well, we've all been here for many hours. And Mr. Burton made the statement that he understood Mr. Hawkins to have said that he told you about threats. And you said that wasn't the case. Is that, is that your testimony? That is exactly correct, sir. Now, the fact of the matter is, I've been here all, uh, most of the day. And I was certainly here for Mr. Hawkins' testimony. And I don't recall that he said that. And I believe Mr. Burton believes what he said was true. I'd be glad to give you the transcript. Well, I, I think the transcript will tell us. But maybe we can do something even better. If uh, See, we have transcripts. We have written transcripts of these, of these proceedings. So everything's taken down, and people have a chance to change their trend, but it's all taken down. What we're going to have, uh, because of the chairman's wisdom, is an internet broadcast of our proceedings, gavel to gavel. And during the proceedings, uh, we've had a tape made of some of the testimony. So I, I would like to, um, uh, with everybody's indulgence, and I, I have the time to do it, uh, show a tape, and I, and I think we can then see what Mr. Hawkins actually said a few hours ago. Yes, now, I can understand that we can have different recollections of what he said and be very sincere about those different recollections, but the fact of the matter is that uh, even, even being sincere doesn't make it accurate. So I wonder if we could um, show that videotape. Well, that obviously isn't the right one. S&P S &P futures were going down, but we all know that the stock market went up today. <laughs> we're obviously operating uh, in a very fast time frame, but uh, if, if, you, if Chairman will indulge me, I think it's coming right up. Mr. Chairman, if I, if I can inquire, I think uh, Mr. Hawkins' testimony... Mr. Chairman, it's my time, and it's not up to the well, gentleman so to inquire stop, at all. The time. It's my time, I, I, will get, I, will, I will give you whatever time you need after Mr. We could, uh, after Mr. We could be quiet, and we can hear the tape. <laughs> yes. 
silent movies. Do we have sound on this one? He's a good looking man for you. Mr. Waxman is right. I did not hear the word threat. <coughs> well, Mr. Chairman, I don't know what to say. Maybe we've gotten too high tech for. Uh, <laughs> And maybe if we can't even get a tape recorder to work, uh, you can understand why Sympathetic to your the White House can't get the whole email system to work to track all the emails. I think when we do look at the record, I, I think we're going to see that Mr. Hawkins made a different statement than what the chairman believed. But I think his belief is sincere, and I may be wrong. And we'll see and we'll, uh, what the record was. And if Mr. Hawkins were here, we could ask him. But the point I'm really making is it's hard to remember precisely what somebody said in a hearing six hours ago, uh, let alone uh, two years ago. And I'm told, and I still have some time, which is my time. It, what, the, way we, the way this committee was supposed to work is we, we have a half hour, uh, so, uh, but now we have 10 minutes. We had a half hour, we split it up, and now I've got 10 minutes. And I'm obviously trying to stall for some time so we can hear this tape. Yes, sir. Because I think it's going to give us uh, an accurate <laughs> portrayal. You can mess with the tape. We'll come back after the vote. Okay. Okay, then we'll come back. Come back after. Mr. Chairman, I think we've uh, handled the situation. I'd like to have that tape rolled. I did not go into that uh, at, at that time, no. Okay. I, I thank you very much. Right. Did you go into it at any time with them? Uh, no. Uh, after. <laughs> Is that it? No, I think we're going to. We missed the question. <laughs> well, as I understand what the tape would have shown would have been a question from Mr. Lotteret, who was a very good questioner, and an answer uh, by Mr. Hawkins indicating that, uh, that uh, he was not uh, uh, told uh, by Mr. Uh, Lindsay about the threats. Look, different people can have different recollections. That's yes, the point I'm making, as well as the other point that's made is that even in this high-tech world, things can get screwed up. And it's clear that the White House expenditure of how, how much money was spent on that whole arm system? Uh, there was $14 million appropriated originally. So we spent millions and millions of dollars to get a system that would retrieve every email so that all the emails can be available to all the independent councils and all the committees of Congress and all the cases where it might be subpoenaed. Uh, the White House made an effort in hiring Northrop Grumman to get that information on that system, and then they found out uh, that there was a glitch in the system. There were contractors, there were subcontractors. This morning we saw that the subcontractors and the contractors were feuding with each other and had different stories to say uh, about uh, the events. Um, and what bothers all of us is that when the White House heard about this, we weren't informed in a timely manner, presumably because the White House was hoping it would be fixed. I was hoping this 
video would have been fixed in time, uh, and uh, then we would have had uh, at least that snippet. But the but the reality is that um, even in this high tech age, things don't always work out the way they're supposed to, and human beings being what they are here, different things at different times. In fact, they say different things at different times as their their recollection gets uh, affected by other people's uh, statements. So it's my understanding that from that tape we would have heard Mr. Hawkins saying one thing. There may be other times he said other things as to th the threats. But uh, there was one statement made that Mrs. Callahan told uh, these contractors not to talk, perhaps with threat of jail, but I think one of them said that you had made those comments because Mr. Lindsay had asked you to make those comments. Uh, as you both would deny that to be the case, or do either of you re remember saying anything along those lines? I, I certainly didn't provide, pass or ask any instruction to be passed on to instruct anyone to intimidate any other person. Absolutely not. And, and I'm not aware of anyone else doing it, certainly. And Mrs. Callahan, he didn't ask you to do it, and you say you didn't do it. Um, Mr. Lindsay never asked me to threaten any employees, and I never personally threatened any employees. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The snippet that we just saw was just that, a snippet, and uh, my staff will go through the uh, entire discussion to make sure that we have it all. But I will read to you what was said by Mr. Hawkins on March the 12th. What? Okay, when we, well, it was March 12th, but when we interviewed uh, him, Mr. Hawkins, here's what he said. Hawkins went to speak to Lindsay and Crabtree and insisted that all work be done within the bounds of the contract. When Hawkins had this conversation, he did not know what work the contract employees were doing, simply that it was outside the bounds of the contract. At the meeting, Crabtree told Hawkins, everything was fine before you stepped in. When he confronted Crabtree about her threatening his employees with jail, she did not deny doing so, but rather turned and left the room without a word. Lindsay further told Hawkins, I hope you appreciate my position. To this, Hawkins res re responded, and pardon my language, this is his language, to this, Hawkins responded, I'm pissed. Dale Helms or Jim Wright didn't authorize the work. Until Dale Helms authorizes the work, it's not going to get done. I've instructed my employees accordingly, and I hope you understand my position. Lindsay replied, is that your final position? Hawkins says it is. So the issue was raised with Crabtree and Lindsay, according to Mr. Hawkins, and I think we'll probably find that on the tape as well. But let me just end up by saying this. I understand the minority, as they always do, poo-pooing, uh, things that we discover and uncover in these investigations. And I understand the rationale for their position. But let me just say this. The emails were subpoenaed right along with everything else by the independent counsel, by us, this committee, by a whole host of people. They were not delivered. They were discovered in 1998. In September of 1996, this glitch started. That was right during the time that possible campaign finance missteps were taken or illegal activities took place. That was very relevant to the campaign finance investigation for which we subpoenaed these documents. We did not get them. And you folks have a different view. You say things didn't happen when six other people sat there today and took issue with you. Uh, I think this is something that's going to have to be looked into further. I don't believe all six of those people are lying. I don't believe those five people felt intimidated because nothing was said to them. I think something was said to them, and I think it needs to be looked into further. And the last thing is, we've waited two years for these documents. Now we're finding out under questioning from Mr. LaTourette that even if a contract was signed today, it would be 211 days, I believe that's right, isn't it, Mr. LaTourette? 211 so days before we would get the information that we're entitled to, and that would be after this administration leaves office. It sure sounds like somebody's blocking, and this is very serious stuff, because if illegal campaign contributions were solicited by people at the White House, if they were involved in a cover-up of other, of, of other investigations that's been going on, then somebody needs to be held accountable and taken to task and possibly even prosecuted. And so for us not to get this information 
after two years is just unthinkable. And for you not to even start the process is unthinkable. So I just say I'm frustrated. I think my colleagues are frustrated. Mr. Barr, did you have any closing comments? Yes, if, uh, if I yield to uh, you. yield for just a moment, Mr. Chairman. Uh, somebody uh, a little bit earlier, maybe it was uh, you, Mr. Lindsay, uh, mentioned the name Ada Posey. Did you mention that or did you, Ms. Callahan? At one point in my testimony, I may have mentioned her name. Yes, who is she? She's the director of the Office of Administration. Uh, is she an, was she an assistant to uh, Hillary Clinton? No, not to my knowledge. Really? I thought that, I thought that, that Ada Posey was. How long has she been in the current position? Uh, she no longer works for the executive office of the president. Okay, let me ask another question. How long had she served there in that office? Uh, I believe for five or six years. Until what time? Until December of 1998. Okay. Uh, have either of you had any discussions at all at any time with lawyers from Northrop Grum Grumman? Have I personally? Yes. Ever? Yes. When we negotiated the contract for Northrop Grumman to come on board, they brought in their counsel uh, at the signing ceremony. I remember meeting a, a counsel from someone from the general counsel's office from, gen, from Northrop Grumman. It must have been in 19, ni early 1997. But that, was, that was the only contact you've had with lawyers from a, uh, Northrop Grumman? Uh, I, I don't have any other specific recollection of conversations with lawyers from Northrop Grumman. Have you had any conversations with them about any of these matters in the discussion no, today? absolutely not. Okay, at no time? Not that I'm aware of. Well, you'd start, you would be aware of them, wouldn't you? I, w I would think so. I, no, I did not have any conversations with anyone from Northrop Grumman. Uh, Ms. Callahan, have you? No, sir. Okay. Uh, how about attorneys from the Department of Justice? At any time during my tenure? Concerning concerning any of these matters? Yes. When? Uh, uh, shortly after the Mail 2 glitch was discovered. But please keep in mind, sir, we were involved in several pieces of records litigation that were going on at that time, and we regularly conferred with our appellate counsel and with elements and individuals from the Justice Department on how those matters were proceeding. We provided information to them. They were our attorneys, and so we had regular communications with them on matters dealing with records. How about, how about these matters, these records? Yes, I had one conversation with um, an individual in the, uh, from the Justice Department about these matters shortly thereafter they were discovered. Which would be in when? Because we, we have a difference. I think it was in June of 1998. I had a conversation with someone from the Justice Department um, because my concern was they were experts in the Federal Records Act and I wanted to know and make sure that any issue, to see if there were any Federal Records issues that were associated with the particular anomaly issue. So this was just a matter of, uh, a matter over that. It didn't concern the specific files that might have been lost or that might need to be located. No, I was the general counsel for the office administration. One of my responsibilities was to work with them in pending litigation. And if there was information that developed that was relevant to that pending litigation, it was my responsibility to make sure that I let them know about it, which is what I did. But the the white the Department of Justice and its lawyers uh, did not question you or you didn't have uh, discussions with them about the specifics of what we're talking about here today. They expressed no interest in what files might be missing, how to retrieve them, uh, why they're missing, and so forth. The, the, in terms of what files, no. It was, a, it was a question of whether or not records that were not put into the ARM system was that information, just providing them with the information as to what happened so that they could make a determination of any other action that needed to be taken. We didn't talk about the subject matter. We talked about just the facts associated with that matter, and it was a relatively short conversation. And, and who was that with? I believe it was Jason Barron from the Justice Department. And that's, that's the only conversation about these matters specifically that you've had with the Department that's of Justice? That's the only one that I have a specific recollection of. Are there any that you don't have a specific recollection of? I mean, we. I, I don't know how I could I mean, say I don't that. know how, I mean, everything you say, it, it, you have a caveat, a footnote to it. Uh, Is that a question, sir? No, it's a statement. Okay. Uh, Ms. Callahan, 
Did, have you had any uh, contacts, conversations of any sort with the Department of Justice or any Department of Justice attorneys concerning any of these matters that bring you here today? None of these matters, sir. Okay. They've never approached you and asked you any questions about any of this? None of this, sir. Pardon? None of this on this subject, sir. Okay. And have you had any conversations with or discussed any of these matters with this lady, Ada Posey? No, sir. At no time? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Waxman. I, I have a few questions. It won't take very long. Well, if you have questions, we'll probably have another round. Go ahead. Uh, I, I was interested in, um, in the recollections of people about the uh, conversation after they, uh, shortly after the problem was discovered, uh, Laura Crabtree, now Mrs. Callahan, who was the branch chief of the customer service computer support in the office administration. And uh, she, she had this meeting with Ms. Golis, Mr. Spriggs, Ms. Lambeth, Mr. Haas, and Ms. Salim, all of whom testified this morning. And Mr. Lindsay, who was OA's general counsel, spoke with those present by speakerphone and instructed them to continue investigating the email problem, but to avoid discussing with anyone else because it was a sensitive matter. Now, that was when Mr. Haas thought you had told him that uh, if he told his wife that y you said, uh, Ms. Callahan, there, there'd be a jail cell with your name on it, end, end quote. Now, when, they, it, when these witnesses who testified this morning were questioned by the staff, uh, obviously Ms. Lambeth accused you of threatening her with jail. Mr. Haas remembered that. But Ms. Salim and Ms. Golas recall, uh, did not recall any threats being made at that meeting. Um, and neither Ms. Golas nor Mr. S Spriggs recall any mention of the word jail. That was the, what they said in the interview. Now, then they testified somewhat like that, but a little differently this morning. So people have their recollections changed. Uh, it's human nature, and I don't think uh, I wouldn't attribute uh, bad intent on anybody's part. You try to remember events of two years ago. Now, I have been told by my staff that this tape is now ready in its entirety, and I'm going to give that one last chance. Uh, so if we could, let's see if we can do it. contracting officer uh, telling me to stay in bounds of my contract and first of all as I told Mr. Lindsay my contract was with the United States government and it was not with Mr. Lindsay nor was it with Miss Posey. Did, did you ask either of these folks that uh, if, if they had threatened these employees with jail and if so why? I did not go into that uh, at, at that time no. Okay I, I thank you very much. Right. Did you go into it at any time with them? Uh, no. Uh, now, that only was a snippet, and I don't know what was going to follow next if he had any further answer to Mr. Burton's, and he may well have said something different in the interview. But again, my essential point is that people have different recollections of what happened two years ago, and we even have different recollections of what had happened a few hours ago. But I thought that uh, tape, uh, I think we all should have seen that tape, and I regretted it's taken us so long to get it up there, but I think uh, that tape, uh, at least as far as it goes, speaks for itself. I yield back the balance of my time. Well, I'll just uh, close then by saying that uh, five people, as I've said before, said they felt threatened. Two of those people said that they had been told they would go to jail. One, when she went to her supervisor and Mr. Hawkins, and Mr. Supervisor said, you got to tell us what's going on. And she said, hey, I can't tell you. He says, well, that's in the borders on the insubordination. She said, I'd rather be insubordinate than to go to jail. Now, that sentence alone infers that she felt the same way as the other two. Now, that's three out of the five. But in any event, all five of them 
felt threatened to the degree that they had to go to a park across the street to talk or to Starbucks because they felt like they had to keep this stuff quiet. So, you know, and then the fact, the other fact is that we haven't had these emails and it's been well over two years, nothing's been done and they're trying to run out the clock, at least that, that's how it appears to me and I think to probably most people who paid attention to this. I think we're going around in circles right now, so <laughs> unless there's further comment, real quickly, Mr. Barr, I want to adjourn this thing. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Lindsay, just a quick follow-up to uh, yes, sir. question and answer about uh, the Department of Justice lawyers. Let me uh, be more specific. Did you approach them to disclose this problem to them? Yes, I did, sir. Okay. Uh, they didn't approach you? No, sir. Okay. Uh, and what was the, the specific purpose of your request to them? If I remember correctly, the, my question was, <clears throat> do we have a federal records issue associated with the fact that this information had been, as a result of a glitch, not included in the ARMS records management system? I believe that that was a specific question. Your concern with the Federal Records Act is what? Uh, he, the, the folks at the Justice Department were experts in it, and I had a concern. I wanted to make sure that I conferred. I mean, what was, what was your concern? I agree. You should have been concerned. That's, yeah. that's a real problem with all of this. But what is your what was your concern with the Federal Records Act? Uh, sir, I believe I, the, in my normal course of business, I considered it due diligence on my part to make that inquiry. I also wanted to make sure that they were aware of this so that it, so that it, it, it could not, um, it, it wasn't relevant or wasn't something that they needed to have or needed information about in relation to other pending litigation. Doesn't the Federal Records Act require these documents to be retained and retrieved? They were retained. Is, isn't that the concern? The question was, did they have to be retained in arms as opposed to other means of retaining those documents. And my recollection of the response that I got was that, no, this was a technical, non-human intervention problem that is not a willful act in any way, shape, or form. Therefore, you're not running afoul of the Federal Records Act, and you're maintaining the information in another form, which can be searched at a later date and maintained to preserve so these there, records. So the records are retrievable. They're there. Oh, to the best of my knowledge, yes. Okay. You, do, you all just haven't gotten them? They have to be reconstructed before they can be retrieved. Mm -hmm. That's the thing we're going to work on, trying to get collapsed to as short a time period as humanly possible. Right. Were these lawyers that you talked to at the Department of Justice, were they the same lawyers representing the White House in the civil litigation? Um, in civil litig what what civil litigation? involving the White House? They represented the Office of Administration in a records case, the Carlin case. Uh, that's the matter which I'm familiar with what they did. What case is that, that Carlin case? Uh, that case dealt with, there were plaintiffs that were essentially claiming that there should be federal records systems, electronic records management systems by all federal agencies, including, in fact, my memory serves me, including Congress. The pr contention was is that any memorandum that you would generate should be maintained in an electronic records management system similar to the one that we maintain with ARMS. That was one of the contentions in the argument. Obviously, doing that just from anyone's casual observation would be a very expensive and complicated proposition. And the issues in those matters dealt with what was the scope of that, whether or not the general records 20, 20 issued by the National Archives what required that there be that kind of records management system. The, the White House has known for quite some time that this problem exists. Which problem? The problem that brings us all here today. And you've testified that it can be resolved. It's simply a question of money. No, I did not say it was a question of money. It wasn't a question of money at all. It was more a question of people than it was of money. Well, you have to pay those people. Correct. Not just a matter of paying the people. Contractors that are brought in must be managed by people who can make sure that the government's interests are covered in terms of making sure that they report responsibly, that they perform their responsibilities. Government workers must be involved in providing supervision for those activities. Why hasn't it been done then? 
I mean, I'm, uh, you're, confu you're confusing the issue, I think, here. I mean, is it that you all don't have enough people, you all don't have enough money, you all don't have enough in qualified no people? What is it? What we have to remember is I mean, in you, November... You tell us that you've been frustrated for two years over this. Sir, in November of 1998, my technical staff came to me and said, you will not be able to meet your Y2K objectives with your systems, plain and simple. That was a very serious proposition. What that meant is not only would this email issue or other things have happened that would be a problem, but it also meant that we could possibly have systems failures and our duty to provide that kind of administrative support to the executive office of president would not be fulfilled. So what we did is we compiled and looked at the list and of all the mission critical systems, those systems that we had to maintain to make sure that we continue to provide the support to the presidency that we were required to do under statute. We need to find, you keep using this term mission critical system and mission critical project. Yes, sir. Wasn't this mission critical? No, it was mission, not, sir. Mission. Oh, you don't consider this mission critical? It was not considered mission critical. There was a the very- The Office of Independent Counsel? There was would a, this committee, would the impeachment committee have con have considered this mission critical? I, I mean, don't it know, It seems sir. fairly important to me. It, saying that it's not mission critical does not mean that it's not important. Well, All of the it projects it, it that we have. It means it doesn't get done. No, it means that it doesn't get done first. Well, it hasn't even been done last. It's been, that's, it has been done, the $600,000 worth of work that the contract the, was going to charge us So it is a question has been of money. On. Has the White House requested the funds necessary to do this? It was not a question of money. We have requested funds to do it. But well, if you question, don't need more money, then why hasn't it been done? Sir, I made the statement that it wasn't a question of money, step one. Step number two is that we needed the staff to be able to do it. At the conclusion of Y2K, we had government staff that had been working on Y2K work on the resolution of this issue. That is step two. To resol resolve step one, I have made the request to the Treasury Postal Appropriations Committee that they provide or allow us to spend funds from another account in that area so that we could pay for the contractor to perform the work. But prior to making that request, we had to know how much money to ask for. We had to know, and we've worked out a relationship with that committee where they have always asked us prior to an appropriation, what is the total project cost? What are the taxpayers going to have to pay to actually complete this issue? They don't want to just begin a project and not know where it's going to end. And I think that's a very appropriate question that Mr. Colby's staff had would have for us, and we wanted to make sure that we were prepared for that. Now, Mr. Colby, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. Me, who who did not consider the mission critical? Somebody had to tell you this is not a top priority. Who was that? There was a, there was a very elaborate process. No, no, no. Who? I could not tell you who. You, you don't know who told you this was not a top priority when the independent counsel, this committee, the impeachment committee, the, the, the judiciary committee of the United States House that was conducting the... the, the you can't remember who didn't, uh, who, who Sir, told you? I, I really do believe we're getting two issues confused. The first issue is the responsiveness of documents. That is an issue that you very legitimately, and I very much respect that you have a concern about having documents produced that should be produced to those pr appropriate bodies that should be produced. That is a determination that the counsel's office would have communicated and would be involved in making a determination. There's a problem number two. Uh, the well, second wait, problem wait, 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 is the resolution uh, of the how did you know, and the reconstruction. How did, you know, how did you know that getting these emails to the relevant individuals when you knew there was a glitch, how did you know that was not mission critical? How did you know that? Somebody had to tell you that. How did I know it wasn't mission critical? Yeah, I mean, how did you know this wasn't the top priority? Because we had a team of people, a Y2K team with a Y2K administrator who followed federal guidelines on assessing what mission critical systems okay, were. Who was the head of that group? Uh, Terry Misich was our Y2K coordinator. Okay, that was the Y2K coordinator. So they said, the Y2K coordinator said that this was not a top priority, but th that the Y2K was more of a pr uh, priority. I don't have any recollection of anyone on the Y2K team making specific reference to this particular project. The analysis... Okay, well then who decided, who decided that this was not a mission critical issue? Because we had the independent counsel, Mr. Starr, we had the, we had this committee, and other committees, I think Senator Thompson's committee, 
and, and we also had the, the Judiciary Committee all subpoenaing documents. And, and, and this was a top priority for the, the independent counsel and for the Congress of the United States. So who in the White House decided this was not a top priority, a mission critical priority? The determination of mission critical systems was a technical determination. As who to, made it? It was a collective decision. Well, who made it? Who was the head? Who made the decision? Ultimately, the sign off on the mission critical systems as to how we went about doing it was probably done by the director of the office administration or by the assistance of the president for management administration. And who were they? The other. And who were they? Ada Posey and Virginia Puzo. Okay, so those. In two terms of the approval of that list, do not take from this from the approval of that list but if there was a had specific to, somebody, analysis. Somebody had to say, hey, this is not something that we want to do right now. This is more important over here. And I just want to know who it was. Well, I, just to put it in context, sir, there were thousands of projects which existed in, in the Office of Administration, I technical understand. projects. I understand, but who set the priorities? A combination of people. <laughs> You don't get your orders from a combination of people. You get them from somebody. Who put this down the list? Who, who set the priorities? Well, I, I, I beg to differ. One of the things that we worked on in working with our appropriations committee is that when we set priorities, we set those priorities collectively. They required that we make those determinations. You know, you, you, we don't have a troika. We don't have three people running the country, we have one, a president of the United States. He's the chief, he's the commander in chief, he's the boss. Somebody, we have a chain of command. When you get your orders, you're getting them from somebody. And so this was a mission critical issue as far as the Congress and the independent council was concerned. And I wanna know who set the priorities. I can't answer the question more fully than I already have. I don't think you've answered it at all. We've got documents that show that you were working on a Christmas card list and preparing new facts cover sheets. Were those mission critical? Y2K mission critical? No, 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 no. We have got documents that we'll be glad to show you that show you were working on Christmas card lists and preparing new facts cover sheets. Were those more critical than getting these documents to the Congress? Those projects were completed, may have been completed in addition to many, many other critical systems. The critical systems that are defined in the mission critical list were things like the email system, the maintenance of our network system. Excuse Those me, are the Mr. kinds Chairman, of mission critical I, systems I, that we I have. My we time. Have to we get, do you have, a, do you have a, a list that shows where this particular matter fits on the list of priorities then? I, don't, I have a list of the mission critical systems which this project was not included on. I do have that. <laughs> okay, and who wrote that? It was prepared by the team of people who prepared the Y2K and prepared our Y2K like strat a, a contractor. Team, a team leader? In addition to, I don't, I don't have a, I don't know who specifically were referred to it or did it other than the Y2K coordinator who was the person who I dealt with. There were other people, including contractor people. There were government sure, people. Certainly contractor and they would people didn't, didn't determine that this matter was not important. I, mean, I, I would hope not, that the I, White House would. I cannot answer the question more fully that I have already answered, sir. How about that specific question? Which specific question? Did contract people determine that this matter was not important enough to follow up on? No, sir. Okay, so you can at least answer that, uh, Mr. Chairman. I've never, I've never heard anything like this. Uh, maybe you have. <laughs> I haven't. All I can say is I'm tired, and we're adjourned.